So let's go to this leaked or this uh, meme that I saw. This, this meme impressed me greatly. And I wanted to show you. Um, it, um, it, it emerged in June of this year. So uh, kind of like early part of this month. And, and there you see, uh, the, it basically catalogs the first uh, six months of the year, you know, things that we all know about, you know, the, the Australia fires, locusts, the pandemic, of course. And then in June, we have uh, these, these riots, these protests, just kind of like coming out of nowhere. Um, and, and, and so you, there's a, there's a it seems to be a kind of pattern here. But then the, this calendar shows what lies ahead in terms of solar flares, uh, eruption of Yellowstone, uh, alien invasion, the pandemic again, and then the asteroids. So, you know, those are not things uh, that we know are absolutely are going to happen, but they are part of this thing called predictive programming. And predictive programming is very important. Uh, it is, um, and this is the person who really defined the term, the first person to come up with the term, uh, was this researcher by the name of Alan Watt. And he defined predictive programming as a subtle form of psychological conditioning provided by the media to acquaint the public with planned societal changes to be implemented by our leaders. If and when these changes are put through, the public will already be familiarized with them and will accept them as natural progressions, thus lessening possible public resistance and commotion. So those events that that calendar was predicting in the future, uh, solar flares, asteroid impacts, alien invasions, you know, that's all part of this program of predictive uh, programming, which uh, the mainstream media just has been bombarding us with images of, you know, asteroid impacts and alien invasions, uh, solar flares, uh, you know, all of these ideas are things that we've been introduced to um, by the mass media and and that is that fits the profile that fits this idea of predictive programming where we're being prepared for any of these things to happen in whatever sequence uh, the deep state wants the people behind this uh, the deep state they are wanting to roll out these possible contingencies in a, in a way that furthers their agenda. So who, who is the, behind the deep state? Well, you know, there's the term itself is, is very vague, you know, deep state. Some people distinguish between the deep state and the shadow government. Uh, and, and of course you can, but you know, this is a really nice graphic that summarizes the kind of hierarchical pyramidical structure of the planet and and you can see at the very bottom down there you know there's there's us the population uh then above it you have this uh, next layer is world population control now um you you have you know religion government the mass media schools courts military all of that is part of the control system uh then above that you have the uh, corporations, uh, the world resource control system. Uh, then above that, you have the world financial control. Um, and then you have at the apex, think tanks, committee of 300, crown council of 13, the world's most powerful families, uh, the world monarch. Some people refer to that as the Pindar. Uh, and uh, that is a person who, um, uh, really is kind of like we would consider maybe uh, a very high level Satanist, uh, a, mag a very powerful magician, sorcerer. I mean, when, when we're getting into this whole idea of the deep state, uh, we, we need to separate, you know, those that just focus on, say, military, um, corporations, the banking system, uh, from those that are occult, occulty. Uh, those people that uh, just, it's not just a matter of uh, believing in, in black magic, but actually practice it. Uh, we're talking people who, have, uh, who, who can do things like uh, remote viewing, 
remote influencing. I mean, that's where you, you get together with a group. about uh, when you get to the higher levels of the black mobility, uh, what is known is that magic is very real. And magic can be used for nefarious purposes or positive purposes. It can be used for uh, you know, individual and societal transformation for the better, or it can use, be used for uh, individual and societal oppression, or all for the worst. And uh, the people that are at the higher levels of this uh, pyramid, they do practice some form of occult, psychic, uh, magical uh, phenomena to be able to influence uh, human affairs. So, you, so they are very good at being able to anticipate global events and to be able to come up with the right events, you know, like we discussed, like, a, like we saw in that meme where it's going to be a global pandemic or it might be race riots or it might be bushfires or uh, asteroid impacts. So they're able to anticipate what's, what's the population is going to be most receptive to. And then they just pull it off, they just implement it. Now, of, of course, uh, the, uh, the virus, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have been talking about it being a pandemic, uh, And it really, I think when we look at the origins of it, you know, where it began, how it began, um, there, there is that element where we have to come really consider that this was a, a developed as a bioweapon in a laboratory near Wuhan, and it was uh, released. You know, whether it was accidental, whether it was deliberate, uh, we, we can debate that. But I think there's more and more evidence that uh, this was a bioweapon developed and how it operates, um, like all bioweapons, um, it definitely impacts the human DNA and when you combine it with other things, um, you, you can you can um, uh, accelerate its effects. You can uh, or you can mitigate. But I will talk about you know one of the processes that uh, do accelerate the effect of coronavirus shortly. Now, one of the things that I found very interesting in in looking at the whole database of whistleblower testimonies is that. There was a whistleblower that came forward under Project Camelot. Uh, he was a middle level manager um, in the city of London after having, uh, he was an officer in the British Navy and then recruited into the city of London um, into one of their executive committees. And, uh, you know, if you're part of the old boys network, you, you tend to get kind of pushed up into the hierarchy. And so he, he got pushed up and he says he attended a meeting in 2005 uh, where you, you had these high level um, deep state Satanists really present planning for the future. And you know, there's a lot of information about what he experienced. And you can go to my article on my website. You know, there's the title of the article um, on exopolitics.org. And you'll find references. You can listen to the interview um, so learn about it. But one of the things he said about that London meeting in 2005 was, quote, biological weapons will be deployed against China. China will catch a cold. So he was basically saying that biological weapons uh, were going to be used against China. Now, who used it? Um, I, I, think, I think what happened in China uh, was a deep state attack that was hope that the deep state wanted to make it look as though it could have been uh, the US that was behind the, uh, the bioweapon and to the rest of the world, make it look like China was behind the bioweapon. That's the way in which the deep state operates, um, that it plays both sides against each other. In other words, when you look at the major countries or the major nations on the planet, what the deep state does is it, it plays a hidden hand, the role of the hidden hand, where it tries to manipulate both sides into um, a violent confrontation. And it tried to do that during the uh, Cold War. Many, many times, you know, the, the, 
the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. You know, there's a good example of how the deep state tried to manipulate both the Soviet Union into the United, and the United States into a nuclear war. And it almost happened, but thankfully, um, you know, there, there were interventions to stop it from happening. And I think this, this uh, coronavirus is also a similarly a, an attack uh, that was uh, engineered by the, by, by the deep state as, as part of its um, role, its set of playing cards, its uh, way of playing these different false flag events to promote its agenda. Uh, now, you know, this is predictive programming. We get to confirm that by looking at, uh, you know, people like uh, Dean Coots, who wrote the book, uh, The Eyes of Darkness, uh, back in 1981. And he predicted a bio, a bio virus um, coming out of Wuhan. And, uh, and so there you have on the, uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, they called the stuff Wuhan 400 because it was developed at their RDNA labs outside the city of Wuhan. And it was the 400th viable strain of man-made microorganisms created at that research facility. So this is exactly what, what pretty close to what really happened. There was a, 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 um, a biological research facility at uh, Wuhan. Um, and this was where this uh, coronavirus 19 was developed, COVID-19 was developed there and it was released. Um, and I think, you know, as I said, the release was uh, deliberate uh, by the deep state, uh, but done in a way that China could interpret it as something the US was behind, or the US could interpret it as something that the Chinese were behind. Um, that's the way the deep state operates. Uh, another person who predicted it was in 2008. Uh, this was uh, Sylvia Brown, the famous psychic. And she said in around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe. Attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments. Almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived, attack again 10 years later, and then disappear." End quote. So again, this is, uh, um, I think we can, put this down as another case of predictive programming, just getting people ready uh, for what's to come. Now that's not to say Sylvia Brown was part of the deep state, but she did definitely did work uh, with people that were a uh, prominent part of the deep state. Uh, the deep state often works with psychics uh, because they understand the reality behind uh, uh, psychical phenomena. And while the mass media will just dismiss psychic phenomena as nonsense, um, high level people in the deep state take it very, very seriously. And people who have abilities like Sylvia Brown, they are sought out by the deep state uh, for giving them an idea of what lies ahead. So you know, again, this is a predictive programming. Now there is a 5G connection here, which is important because uh, Wuhan, uh, the city in China where the coronavirus first emerged, uh, that was also the place where 5G was, was rolled out. And, and this is a fact here. You have uh, from the government of uh, the Chinese government, uh, the local authorities in Hubei province put out a notice. Uh, this was back in April, 2018, so two years ago, they said a large scale 5G network engineering program will be piloted in Wuhan to accelerate the deployment of this new technology and to hopefully upgrade the IT industry. Um, and so as a pilot city, uh, they put in uh, 3000 macro base stations and 27,000 micro base stations. So that was what was being developed in Wuhan. And by the end of uh, 2018, the trial use of the technology will start in pilot areas that expected to be accessible for users at the military world games in 2019. So those world games um, occurred in October of 2019. 
And um, I, I think it's very interesting that that is also around the time that this uh, bioweapon was released. Now, you know, there, there is a very important reason why 5G and the, uh, the virus are connected. Now, this is a graph that um, was put out by a researcher uh, for his company. Uh, his company is called RF Global Net, and it was a Japanese researcher, Shigiaki Hakusui. Uh, that was in 2001. And you, you can find this anywhere, but this is fact. And basically what, what, it, what it tells us is that at, um, at a frequency of uh, around 60 gigahertz, and the 5G spectrum goes from around uh, 5 gigahertz all the way up to about 100 gigahertz, that at 60 gigahertz, which 5G towers can transmit, um, oxygen is, uh, the EMF is fully absorbed by the oxygen. So 98% of energy absorbed by oxygen. What that means is that when 5G is being transmitted at this particular frequency of 60 gigahertz, the oxygen molecules where that 5G is being transmitted, you know, where the, uh, where the energy is being transmitted, um, all the oxygen molecules are going to be absorbing that fully, 98%, close to 100%. Um, and so that means if you have transmitting towers, uh, you know, all over a city, 5G, and your phone as well is a transmitter. If your, your phone is receiving a 5G signal, it's transmitting it as well. Um, then any, 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 uh, all the oxygen in the vicinity of that energy that's being transmitted um, is going to fully absorb that EMF. Now, what happens uh, when, on, uh, when oxygen uh, absorbs... Uh, uh, 60 gigahertz, basically it behaves uh, differently. It's, its spin reverses itself. So um, you, there are researchers that describe this in more depth, but basically uh, the hemoglobin in our body, the blood supply, uh, you know, it carries oxygen all around our body. But if the oxygen in our body, you know, in the blood supply, especially near the skin, if that's, if that's being uh, impacted by this uh, 60 gigahertz 5G transmission, that oxygen is going to uh, basically not function as it should. Your body is not going to be able to absorb it. And so when it goes into the lungs, the oxygen can't be uh, fully absorbed. It, in, in other words, even though your body has plenty of oxygen in it, you're breathing in plenty of oxygen because of the 5G, uh, you're, it's like you're not getting any oxygen because what you're getting has been, is now, uh, has been poisoned. It's, uh, the spin is wrong and the body's not absorbing it as it should. And, and that's why people can get sick. That's why you saw some of these pictures of people in Wuhan, uh, basically passed out on the road, uh, because their body was just lacking oxygen. So that's what happens. You know, people who get the virus, and, and if they're also in the vicinity, one of these 5G towers, um, basically it exacerbates the effect. So, uh, so this is all part of the, the, the predictive programming uh, that the deep state has put in place. There's another source that gives us a little more of an idea of some of the additional false flag playing cards that the deep state has in mind. Um, in that, in that uh, uh, meme I showed you at the beginning of, of what lies ahead, uh, it discussed asteroids, it discussed uh, an alien invasion. So you know, there's an article where I begin to talk about the possibility of the deep state launching a false flag alien invasion. Um, because I think that this, uh, this uh, coronavirus card is not going to succeed. Uh, you know, there are too many people understanding what's going on, relationship with 5G, um, you know, that it's just being promoted to death by the mass media. So something else is going to happen. And, and what, 
was described was um, a sequence of events that Werner von Braun says that he was introduced to uh, when he was working at Fairchild Industries uh, from, he began working there in 1972. And he, two years later, he ran across uh, this uh, Carol Rosen, who also began to work at uh, Fairchild Industries. And he told her about the sequence of events that the deep state was planning. Fairchild Industries is, uh, is a company that works on uh, very highly classified uh, programs. Uh, it's a key part or was a key part of the military industrial complex at the time. And when, when Von Braun was there, he was working on a, uh, on a, on a space station that the NSA uh, wanted, sorry, that, a space station that the, uh, that the Air Force and the National Reconnaissance Office wanted built for them. So that's why he went to Fairchild Industries in 1972. Uh, just before the final Apollo, uh, Apollo 17 was launched. So I discussed that in one of my books, uh, the US Air Force Secret Space Program, exactly what it was that uh, uh, Werner von Braun did when he was when at uh, Fairchild Industries. But what he told uh, Carol Rosen was, was this, and this is from an interview Carol Rosen did, and she described the strategy as follows. The strategy that Werner von Braun taught me was that first the Russians are going to be considered to be the enemy, then terrorists would be identified, and that was soon to follow. Then we were going to identify third world country crazies. We now call them nations of concern. So, you know, we've gone through all of that. You know, we've called Iran, uh, North Korea, uh, places like Libya, Syria, Iraq, uh, they were all nations of concern, but of course they were all uh, invaded and taken over. Uh, a few left, like Iran and North Korea, uh, but uh, you know, but pretty much that's the sequence that has been followed. So this was back in 1974 that Werner von Braun predicted this, or was told that this was what was going to happen. Uh, the next enemy was asteroids. Asteroids against asteroids. We are going to build space-based space weapons. The last card is the alien card. We are going to have to build space-based weapons against aliens and all of it is a lie. So back in 74, Von Braun was warning that um, the deep state eventually uh, it would start to play the asteroid card. Um, and, you know, we're seeing that. Um, if you've been watching the media, uh, you have probably seen all of these uh, reports of us just miss, being missed by an asteroid, that uh, basically the mass media is saying that uh, we have no defence against them, that these asteroids, you know, while there, there is deep state tracking going on, a lot of these asteroids just appear out of nowhere and just miss us. And it's only a matter of time before we get hit. So there's, you know, predictive programming going on there. Then the last card is the alien card. We're going to have to build space-based weapons against aliens and all of it is a lie. So, so the alien invasion card, that is something that can be played. Um, now, John D'Souza talked about... Uh, the uh, holographic technologies that were used in the 9-11 attack. Um, and so there's a good example. If you can make it look as though planes crashed into these buildings, you know, the World Trade Centers and of course the Pentagon, but in fact, there was nothing there because as John said, there, there was absolutely no aircraft uh, debris recovered. It was all a, a giant hologram. And, and, and the thing to keep in mind is that, you know, there are people that say that, you know, we heard the holo so we heard the planes, uh, we saw the planes crash into the World Trade Center. And that just shows you how sophisticated these holograms are, where, where people will actually see a plane and hear a plane and see it crash into the, into the building. And, and, you know, they're absolutely convinced that this was a plane crashing, but of course there's no plane debris because it was all a hologram. So that was, that was back in 2001, nearly 20 years ago, they could fake a holographic 
airplane attack against the World Trade Centers and against the Pentagon. So that's 20 years ago. So the technology does exist for an alien invasion using holograms and maybe some real craft just to kind of like, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, there's, there, there are detonations and people are totally convinced. So yeah, definitely the ability is there to pull off an alien invasion uh, to hoax one using this holographic technology. Uh, whether people buy into it, that's, that's the story, that's the problem. But, um, you know, that's something uh, we uh, just, just have to kind of like hope for the best that uh, people, when this, uh, if, if this does happen, people will wake up and realize it's a farce or maybe they'll just accept it as, as they have many other things. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Neil with Portal to Ascension, and I just wanted to take a moment really quick and show you the Portal to Ascension platform. The presentation or the documentary that you just watched was one of our many productions that I've done over the years, created over well over a thousand uh, workshops, events, conferences, retreats, webinars, and this is how our website works. If you want to go ahead and receive not only access to this presentation, uh, but hundreds of other presentations that we have available for you right now for free. You can go to our website, you enter your name right here, you email right here, click sign up. Pretty soon we're going to be launching a new website, but the, the procedure is pretty much the same. You know, your name, email, sign up. Once you do that, you're going to get an email with your username and a temporary password. You then click log in. Once you log in, you're going to see the whole entire back end laid out with all the webinars and presentations for you. Not only can you start typing by speaker name, topic, category, whatever you want, even letter, but you can scroll down this list here and sort by category. And I'm not going to read these off to you, but you can take a look. We have a lot of different topics. You for disclosure, true world history, spiritual development, science, sacred geometry, and so much more. And then you can also search by speaker, which we have here alphabetically, or you can just browse the whole entire thing here and take a look at all these presentations. You are able to, if you can take a look up the top corner here, you're able to add to your watch list to watch these back anytime you want. So you can add to your watch list, it'll be put there. When you come back into the platform, you can continue watching where you left off. There's a documentaries tab, there's an interviews tab, and this is how the individual event page will look. So right now you can go to the website, portaltoascension.org, put in your name and email, sign up, you'll get access to what you just watched, and there's so much more footage. There's free footage being added weekly. So really, this is a one-stop shop for consciousness. And there's always new valid content for you that is relevant for the times that we're currently in, where we're not only dissecting and delving deep into the ancient past, but also creating information that will empower us for the future to come. And here is an example of one of the event pages. This one's on Billy Carson, Quantum Macabre Manifestation. You can view it right there. Description, speaker image. That would also go to his bio and then also suggested webinars that you can tune into as well. And then of course, please do leave a comment and leave us feedback. So there you go, guys, that's our back end, and that's how portal to Ascension works. Go ahead, go to the website right now, portal to ascension.org. It's your name, email, sign up, take a look at the site, let us know what you think and enjoy.